Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about our 20-gallon hose-end sprayers. As you can see, we have three here. They all do the same thing. They all hook to a garden hose. They all use the power and the water from the garden hose to disperse what you put inside these holding tanks. The reason this video is being put together is because we are in the year 2021 and we're still very much in the pandemic known as COVID and we have been struggling to get a consistent supply of these sprayers. The bottom line is these three we tend to have, but it's still unclear which one we're going to have for the whole year. And having this video will help explain so that no matter which one you get, it will cover you, meaning that it will explain how you can utilize it for whatever product you're going to need to apply. A quick summary of how these sprayers work. Basically, you add water and chemical to the tanks. You then hook up the sprayer to your garden hose and they all feature an on-off so that you can disperse product out of these sprayers. These two sprayers are very, very similar. They each have a 32 ounce tank. They each connect to the hose. They each have a off and on up here. There's a little tab that some people choose to cut off. If you leave that on, you can still push it and twist past it to get the water flowing. It is kind of a locking mechanism, meaning that if you leave the tab in place, you won't be able to turn this off and on. So for some people that will remove it, you can choose to do either or, but both of these have it. This particular sprayer does have a rotating neck, a little bit different from this one, which is very much not going to rotate unless you spin the whole jug. This sprayer is very different compared to these two in that in order for it to remove or pump out the contents inside the tank, there's a small hole on top that you need to have your finger on when you're doing your spraying. So the hole has to be covered and when it is, you create basically a vacuum so that the siphon effect can work. If you don't have your finger over this hole, the material getting sucked out will be inconsistent and ultimately lead to misapplications. So the brief summary is that these two sprayers are exactly the same. This one requires you to make sure that you have your finger over this hole for it to suck out the chemical that's in here. One big confusion that people have with these sprayers, and there is a few, I'm going to discuss those in a moment, but one big one is that many people feel or believe that when this is hooked to the hose, the hose will pump water in here and then push product out. And that's not how these work. These are not fertilizing sprayers and they're not designed to be used with anything granular or powder. The water simply flows through the top of the sprayer. And when it does, the siphon is created, which in turn will suck out the chemical through this straw. So, it's all based on the water flow and the siphon effect. So don't expect water to go into the tank. It's not going to happen. And if it is, there's a problem. So the second confusing thing that we hear from customers regarding the use of these sprayers is how in the world they can be doing anything properly. In other words, people are very confused. They're adding a little bit of water. They're adding X amount of chemical but they don't understand how the sprayer knows where everything should go. Well, the reality is that the sprayer doesn't know. And the only way you can efficiently use them is if you have two bits of information. There's two very important uh, measurements that you need to make before you do any applications. So the first is knowing the square footage of the area that you want to treat. And the second is the amount of chemical that is needed to cover that area. In all cases, if you're using these sprayers, it doesn't matter if you're applying an insecticide, a fungicide, a herbicide, or a fertilizer. They all require 
a certain amount. It's generally half ounce, a quarter of an ounce, two ounces, something in that range per 1,000 square feet. What the sprayer allows you to do is take that chemical, put it in the tank, add water, hook it to your hose, and then disperse those, for example, two ounces over 1,000 square feet in a way that's very uniform. You would not need these sprayers if you could take the chemical, put it in your hand, and just throw it out and have it magically cover everything in a uniform fashion. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So the sprayer allows you to disperse the product, and it's a combination of water and time that will get the product out there. I say time because the water flow from a garden hose varies dramatically from house to house. And this also confuses people because they know, hey, my neighbor's house, the water flows a lot faster. So how can this be working the same in his yard versus my yard? It always goes back to the square footage and the amount of chemical that's needed. And it doesn't matter if your sprayer or water flow is half as fast as someone else's, as long as you get the contents that you've put in there, which are designed to cover the area that you've pre-measured, you will get the same results. So let's talk an example so that maybe you will be able to understand how it is that this will serve you regardless of water flow and regardless of how big of an area you have to cover. In this example, we're going to say that this is a side of a house and it just so happens that it has a giant wrap on there that says bugspray.com. Obviously, it's not the side of the house, but let's imagine it is. Let's say that this is 50 feet wide, and let's say that the house is 20 feet tall, and you want to spray right to the roof line. 20 feet times 50 feet is 1,000 square feet. So the side of that house is 1,000 square feet. Now let's say that we have four sides, like most homes, and let's say that this particular house is exactly perfectly square. So each side has a thousand square feet. We now are up to 4,000 square feet. And that's a good number. In other words, we have a very clear surface area that we want to spray. We want to spray from the roof line down the side of the home. We've got 4,000 square feet. But in this example, we've also determined that we want to come out about 10 feet. So we know we have 50 feet here. And we want to come out 10 feet so that's 500 square feet here and we've got a thousand square feet here that's 1500 square feet and once again if we multiply this times four we come up with the total square footage of what you want to spray in this example which would be 6,000 square feet so now we have the square footage so let's talk chemical when we talk about chemicals there is a wide range that might be used as far as how much per 1,000 square feet, etc. For example, products like this Joy Juice by Monty's, you might use one to two ounces per 1,000 square feet. Something like ProThor over here, maybe half an ounce per 1,000 square feet. But for this example, we're gonna make it very simple. We're gonna say a half ounce per 1,000 square feet. And since we know we have 6,000 square feet, we know we will need three ounces to cover all the areas. So if you could take those three ounces and throw it at the house and have it magically disperse around the house and on the ground in a uniform fashion, you would not need the sprayers. But as we've already discussed, it's not an option. So that's why we're going to use the sprayer. Now let's take a careful look at the sprayer. If you put three ounces in here, it's barely going to register. In fact, the lowest line is four ounces. That's a small amount at the very bottom and getting three ounces in there could be tricky. So how do you get three ounces in here without even seeing a three on the bottom? Well the first and easy answer is obvious. Fill it to where it's at five ounces right in between the six and the four and then add till you get up to eight because five ounces plus three is eight. Now you know you've added the right amount of chemical or fertilizer, whatever it is that you want to spray. What's important here to understand is that this is really here for the chemical that you're adding. 
And after you've added the chemical, how much water you put in here is almost irrelevant. And I say that because with all these products, the water is merely the carrier. All the water is doing is carrying the product, the chemical, whether it's fertilizer, insecticide, herbicide, etc., onto the side of the building and onto the ground. Where it gets tricky is that if your hose is very powerful, you can spray out everything in a very short period of time. And that means you're going to be over applying. It doesn't mean it's going to be hazardous. It just, mean, it just means you're probably wasting some money. What we always recommend is very simple. Fill up the sprayer to the 10 gallon line, which means that it's going to take 10 gallons to empty it. If you had this sprayer here, it would be about the halfway mark. If you have this sprayer here, it has on the one side 10 gallons here. It's halfway. Fill it with just water. Then go out and spray the sides of the home and that 10 foot strip on the ground and walk around and see how long half of this tank takes to empty it and go from there. So if you use up everything in the sprayer, but you've only sprayed half of the house, then that means based on your pace, based on how fast you're moving and how the water flows, you're going to need to do one of two things. You're going to have to walk faster to get the rest of the area covered with those three ounces, or this is a very viable option. You can simply double the water. So if you added this to the top with water, the three ounces that were in here of chemical would then be dispersed over the entire area because you already know that you were able to do half of the area when you filled it with water to the 10 gallon line. So that should give you kind of like a plan on how to figure out how fast these pump because it is very accurate, meaning that every house is different and the flow rate of water will affect how long it takes for the spray to come out. One of the biggest problems we see with this is that people will add their chemical, add water, do their spraying, have chemical left over, and they think they're okay. But that's not true. You need to get the right amount of chemical over that area. And whether it takes 10 gallons to do it or 20 gallons, it doesn't matter. Water is just a carrier. And you might think, well, that means the chemical is more dilute. Remember, if the chemical is properly dispersed over the square footage, it doesn't matter how much water you used. It will be properly in place because you used X amount of that chemical, in this case, this, the three ounces that we've been using for the example. So in summary, what's important to understand here is that these sprayers can do the job and they're very flexible. So don't get hung up or confused about how they work. Follow the guidelines, and the guidelines stipulate very simply, you need to know the square footage. In this case, for our example, it was 6,000 square feet, and you need to know how much chemical per 1,000 square feet you want to apply. In this case, it was half an ounce. So we know we need to get three ounces out there, and whether we could do that with one gallon of mixed material or 20 gallons of mixed material, it doesn't matter. As long as the three ounces are in that quantity of water and you disperse it on each side of the home and on the ground in front of the home, you will have in place the proper treatment. One thing I like to add regarding the use of these sprayers is that it is strongly advisable that you practice with them before you put them to use with any chemical. And what I mean by that is adding water, going outside, spraying, using variable rates of water and see how far it sprays. This particular unit has a nozzle that you can actually snap off if you want to. And if you remove this, it will then be very much like a pin stream and generally too powerful. If you put that on, this is like a, a, like a deflector. And basically what it does, it allows the spray to come out and be dispersed in a fan pattern. These two sprayers, have that pattern built in so it tends to come out pretty wide right away all the time and it's kind of impedes the flow a little bit but again that's 
in general, the proper way to get the spray out there. So they all work very similar in that fashion, but practicing with water is always advisable. So if you've not used any of these before, we highly recommend that you fill them halfway with water, go out in the yard and experiment with them first to get a good feel of how things are working. One last note, and that is regarding the use of mixing products. This is highly desirable when you have a couple of materials that you're going to put out. It just so happens at my house during the summer, I use this particular product to fertilize my zoysia grass. And I also use a fungicide that we sell. Both of these I add to the tank at the same time. And I also add some of the Prothor, which is an insecticide. So I'm actually combining an insecticide, a fungicide, and a fertilizer into these tanks, adding the water and doing the uniform treatment all at once, which is, in my mind, as good as it gets because it saves me so much time. The rate that I'm using with the fertilizer is two ounces per thousand. And I put that out about once a month, starting in May. The fungicide, I use one ounce per gallon, same uh, rate per thousand square feet. And then the insecticide, I also put out at one ounce per gallon, which is a bit strong, but I don't want anything tearing up my zoysia. She's just too pretty. And I add those three products to the tank. And then I fill this up to the top, which is about 20 gallons of water needed to disperse the product. I don't have quite 10,000 square feet that I'm treating. It's more about 8,000 square feet now. So I have a very good feel for how these units work. And I have been using all three of these over the years. So I understand that Again, having the extra water in there is not a problem. We want the water to carry the product down into the ground. So for turf treatment, it's, it's perfect. If I need to spray the trees, which I do on a regular basis as well, it's a little different. And we'll get into that regarding the tree borer applications. So if you're needing to use any of these for tree borers, view that video because it gets into specifics there. Well, thank you for watching this how-to video from bugspray.com.